Hey, did you see that? Season 7, episode 16 of the Haves and the Have-Nots. Wow, you know, this episode wasn't that exciting to me. I don't know about you guys. It, it I mean, it had you wondering about some things, but it wasn't that same excitement that I got off the other episodes. But maybe you feel differently. But of course, it started off with, you know, Vinny down in the basement at the Iron Bone, you know, and uh, Uncle Vinny shot him. But then we find out that Thud, we heard, was Punk Wyatt dr dropping to the floor. You know how Wyatt is. So he ain't trying to get, he, he sober up real quick. He went, he, he about to get shot at. And so he jumped down on the floor and... You know, Uncle Vinny is getting on Sandy's case for being soft, and he called him a wimp and everything else. And he said, no, I'm not. I'm going to get better. Don't worry, Uncle Vinny. I'm going to get better. And he's like, nah, you're a wimp, he told him. He's like, if you want to um, carry out the uh, Malone's name, you know, he was telling him, you're going to have to step up his game. And he is. He only tough when he want to be racist against black people, which is ridiculous. So he's telling him, you know, that's what they do. You can't be afraid to kill someone. You know, and he threatens to tell Mama Rose on him, too. But Sandy's like, no, no, no. You know, I'm going to get better. I'm going to get better. So he tells Sandy to go upstairs. Just just, just leave. Just go, Sandy. And so he's down there with Wyatt. Uncle Vinny's down there with Wyatt, and he's talking to him, and he's telling him the only reason he's alive is because he's worth a million dollars to him. He said, else he'd want him dead. He's like, you see the scar you left me with this? That left me there to die? And he's like, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. You know, you know, we know how Wyatt is. He's like, I'm sorry. He's apologetic. And, and he asked him, what happened to him? You know, Uncle Vinny is like, what is wrong with you? You know, <laughs> I think he called him a, a, a strung out piece of shit. <laughs> he said, you struck out piece of shit, you know, and he's like, what happened to you? And he tells him he was in jail and that he, he was in jail. He's like, and he escaped from the hospital. And he's like, well, why, why your wrist? What's that with your wrist? You try to kill yourself? He said, oh, you freaking rich people. You have all this money. You know, you know, Uncle Vinny. And it's like, and it's true. Some of them, they got all this money and always upset. And he asked him what he was in jail for. He said, for shooting his parents. He's like, what? He said, you ungrateful piece of crap. He said, I should just kill you. He said, he said, I should just, sh uh, what he said, he, he told him he was spoiled and told him he should just, um, do him, like shoot him for everybody, do it as a favor to everybody, just kill him himself. And I'm like, he's right about Wyatt, you know, he's, he's ridiculous. And so Wyatt is telling him that he he only did that to get a, get some meds to get into the hospital or have to get some drugs and they wasn't giving it so he escaped from the hospital and uncle Vinny's like this is crazy i can't even believe this you know so he tells him the whole story and stuff and he said my mother's not gonna pay the million dollars because she doesn't care about me and he said i know you're not sitting here starting to cry Uncle Vinny's looking at him like, uh-uh, I ain't no damn therapist. Don't you sit here and be freaking crying up in here. <laughs> so, um, he kept telling White to shut up when he didn't want him to talk. And it was just, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so, then they show Benny and Candace. And they got Benny with this being cheap and saving money and this costs too much and all this stuff. And I'm like... He didn't worry when he got that million dollars and he said, give me a check for like 300000 He brought a truck. He didn't hesitate to order, get that. And I'm just like, why all of a sudden he nitpicking and it's not even his money. It's Candace's money. You think Candace don't know how to handle her money? She of all people know how. But she walks into the room. She sees him on the phone with the realtor. He's talking about she sounds cute. Her name is Rihanna. Of course. <laughs> it's Rihanna. And, you know, and he go he goes to see her, and he asks Candace to go, and, of course, Candace says, no, she don't feel well. Y'all know one of those past episodes, Candace had, did she have a pregnancy test? They, or they said that she went to get a pregnancy test. I don't know how they knew what she bought, but I think Candace is pregnant. I think Candace is pregnant. Y'all put it down in the comment section if that's what y'all think, because that's what I'm thinking right now. You know, she was like, she's not feeling well. It was the morning. 
morning sickness hello you know so when benny leaves she calls mitch asks mitch to come over mitch comes over of course they hug and what do we learn what do we learn we knew something there was a fling but i you know i know they had a thing but i didn't know they was dating so he mitch said you know i hadn't seen that look on your face since we broke up that's the same look you had and she was like oh Mitch and something and I'm like oh and she starts talking you know she doesn't tell much but she starts can't start sharing you know she still has feelings for Charles she said he made me believe that we had something he made me believe that I could change and could be different and you know she tells um she telling Mitch that he lied to her and he's like he did not lie to you he made a choice he said it was a choice he made, not a lie, you know, and um, he said, don't be surprised if he come up in your, your life again. And, and he, she said, Landon says the same thing. And he's like, Landon's probably right, you know, but she says, she asks Mitch, what did he tell Benny? Because Benny's being too calm or something like that. I, I don't know what it is, why he, she's saying that, but she said, Benny's being too calm and he told him what he said. And he said, well, he probably believed me and he's not worried about it. She said, no, something's off. I didn't notice anything. I, I, I just, I didn't notice anything about Benny, but I was like, oh, well, maybe, maybe, maybe she's right, you know. And then who else was, who was in this episode? What else happened tonight? Um, oh, but she did ask Mitch to watch out for Benny. She said, please look out for him, you know, while she's gone and stuff away. So he was like, you know, I'll do that. And he hugged her because he was like, you know, when you call, I'll come running. And then he had a drink. He had a drink. And Candace always drinks. Candace didn't have a drink this time. Hmm. Hmm. Why didn't Candace have a drink this time? She always, I've never seen her turn down a drink in any of these episodes. But she let Mitch drink by herself. So that was a that was another clue. Okay. And then they show that I don't know about y'all, but what is going on with that senator Wesley? What is going on? One, he got a drinking problem. He does because every time we see him, he got a glass or going to get a glass. And he was drinking when Landon came in. They were meeting each other for the first time, you know. And he tells Landon something about the way he looks after Charles. It's personal. Seems more personal. And you know, Landon is taken back aback. You know, he's not sure about this, and he's like, what, like. No, he said, no, no, that's good. That's good. And I'm trying to figure out who is this senator? Because all the stuff he's saying the other week, he wanted um, uh, Charles to call Candace. And now he mentions it again. He was saying, tell me about Candace Young. He's asking Landon and Landon's like, what? What, what about Candace Young? And y'all remember that guy that um, Landon kept? going back and forth with, I forgot his name, that had the little mop top on his head. That guy said his daddy wanted to be the president. And I'm trying to figure out what, no, he said his father didn't have any political experience and this guy does have political experience, so I don't know. But he keeps asking and it is strange and he wants to get involved saying, what if I could, what if I could ask them, Senator Wesley saying, what if I could reach out to her? And Landon's like, I don't think that's a good idea. I don't think that's a good idea. And he's like, why? You know, he's like, no. He's like, does Charles know about this? No, didn't, you know. And he keeps telling him, you know, I don't feel comfortable talking about this with you. You need to ask Charles. And he's like, I'm asking you, boy. He called him a boy. I was like, whoa. And that was a black guy? <laughs> I'm sorry. A brother would have went off. Boy, don't be calling me no boy, you know. And so he said he thinks that um, Charles is in love with Candace. And he thinks... He should reach out to him. And he said, Charles won't do that. And But Landon was surprised to hear the word love. He's like, did I misspeak? Is it not love and stuff? And I, I, I don't know. I don't think it's, I know he cares about her. I don't know if he's in love with her, per se. But, you know, it, it was crazy. So Landon said it's not a good idea. Don't reach out to her. And we learned that the senator, this Senator Wesley was um, Landon's, not Landon's, was Charles' teacher in college. So he's like, Landon says, but he's not a college kid anymore. You know, 
He's the president-elect of the United States. I was like, I hear that. He said, you should consider that in your decision-making because he's trying to get involved and Landis trying to tell him not to do it, you know. And the senator says, you, you're probably right, you know. And even Charles already told him don't get involved. Anyway, then they go to Veronica or Laurel's husband. She's knocking on the glass. She wants him to come back in. She's calling him a pool boy again. And he corrected her again and said, I told you, I'm not a pool boy. I'm a contractor. I design pools for a living. I was like, that's right, brother boy. Get it straight. Because even I was calling him the pool boy for a minute. I didn't know. And did she go ask him, you know, to go and reach something up off the shelf real high for her and stuff while she look at his physique and everything. And she tells him how handsome and how tall he is. She, you know, your wife really appreciates it. And, and he's like, yeah, she does. And, and he's thanking her again for the clothes that he gave his wife. She, she really loved it and she enjoyed, you know, she, she's appreciative and she's like, oh, that's no problem. You know, that's because Veronica got her pretending that girl, pretending it's her. She gonna get that girl killed. If y'all all know how crazy Veronica is, can't tell me she's not going to get that girl in trouble or hurt some kind of way. Because she was looking for somebody that was built like her and wanted her to wear her wigs. and her. It's ridiculous. These poor people, I feel so bad. They think they're going to rob her and steal from her. And one of them going to end up getting killed because of her. And so she asked him if he's um, happily married and stuff. And, he, and has he ever cheated on his wife? And he's like, no, I'm happily married. I love my wife. You know, I've never cheated. She's laughing. <laughs> and he's like, what's so funny? She said, because men always lie about that. And she was like, oh, my God. I couldn't believe Veronica. Yes, yes, I could believe Veronica. You know, but he said, you can ask my wife. I've never cheated on her. I'm not, you know. And she's like, don't you ever want to be rich or something like that? And he says, I'm happy with my life. She said, nobody's happy with their life. <laughs> uh, you know, and, oh, anyway, he said, well, then you seem to be hanging around the wrong people. I said, ooh, no, he didn't. Slam. Yes, he did. And he, he you know, he thanks her for the clothes and she, he leaves. He said, can I get back to that pool? Because she, you know, she keep bothering him. He's trying to get it clean and get out of there. And she said, okay. And then when he leaves, she's like, hmm, I'm going to have him cheating, drinking. Oh, because she asked him, did he want to drink? That's right. And he said, no, he don't drink. She said, she's going to have him eating, drinking, and, and what is it? Cheating, drinking, and in her bed in no time. I said, oh, she a Veronica a whore. She a hoe, a whore, a everything. That's all she is, and she ain't no darn good. She really is not. I don't know what it is with her with them young boys and thugs and stuff, but that's her thing. You know, maybe David wasn't laying it on her the right way. I don't <laughs> Y'all tell me. <laughs> I mean, you tell me. You know, and then they go to Madison. I knew this boy was something. Madison, we at Madison's house, apartment, and this guy just walks in. I forgot his name. And he, Kobe, and he just walks in and getting undressed, talking about he gonna come in the shower with him, and it's Jeffrey in the shower. And Jeffrey's like, what? And Jeffrey got on a towel wrapped around him, and he comes out, and he sees him. He's like, who are you? So, you know, they go back and forth. And this guy is one of those little flaming, crazy little, you know, gay people, and... He's acting like Madison. You know that sassiness they have? They they too sassy. Jeffrey's not sassy. I have gay friends who are not sassy. And then there's the ones who are flamboyant with it. You know, so he was a little sassy. It's, everything is about sex and ooh, your body and your booty and your chest and your arms. And, and do I excite you? Oh, you excite me. And oh, they were going on and back and forth. And he told Jeffrey he looked like this stripper named Leo. And Jeffrey's like, no. That's not me, you know. And he's asking him, how does he know? And we find out this was Madison's ex-boyfriend. And they ask how long they've been together. And he said, for a year. And he's and he's asking Jeffrey, says, what happened? You know, they trying to find, he's trying to find out what's going on. And when he asked Jeffrey, was Jeffrey dating Madison? Jeffrey said, no. But when Justin asked him, Jeffrey said, yes. So Jeffrey's a little confused about who he is or what's going on or something. I don't know, but he was, they was wearing me out the back and forth, the sassiness and stuff. And so, 
you know, when Jeffrey went to, Jeffrey's telling him to put on his clothes because the dude took off all his clothes in the house. And he's like, I do my turning you on. And he's like, mm, no, can you put on your clothes? He said, you put on your clothes. And Jeffrey's like, yeah, I'll put on my clothes. And when Jeffrey turned, he said, oh, I was trying to see your butt. He's like, oh, my goodness. He said, I wanted to see what you were hiding back there. And he said, uh, what did he tell me? Your ass is out of this world. <laughs> he told you, your ass is out of this world. Oh, and your skin is like honey. And Jeffrey's like, yeah, I heard that. <laughs> I said, oh, excuse me. Excuse me. You know? And so Jeffrey tells him he was going to see, um, oh, he was going to see me, uh, Madison for lunch. And he's like, are you thinking what I'm thinking? That's what Kobe, are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'm thinking we should go say hi to Madison together. Let's go say it. And Jeffrey said, you know what? That's a good idea. Because Jeffrey want to know who the hell is this that Madison allowed them to just walk in the house. You leave Jeffrey at your house and you got a spare key somewhere for people to just walk in. It, it, it's not even making any sense. So Je the guy goes, oh, you want to ride on my bike with me? You want to ride? Kobe's like, you want to ride on my bike? And he's like, um, no. I, I'm good. I'm good. I'll drive. He said, okay, then I'll drive. I'll ride with you. And he's like, damn, you pushy. <laughs> Jeffrey's like, damn, you pushy. This guy, it's like, he's like Madison when Madison was being pushy about, oh, Jeffrey's father got to get over it. David got to get over it. You know, you know, he's gay. Your son is gay. And you have to just understand. People don't just understand. People need time for this, and especially the way they act. You know, the flamboyant type. It's just really sometimes hard to deal with that. Other men to deal with that. It is. You know? And so, moving on. They show, um, uh, who else do they show? They show David and Jim for a second. You know, Jim brings him the info about the car. They find out the address of the car, where it's located. But the funny part was <laughs> they had to give the password. <laughs> And the password they had they made for the car was thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and you hear Jim said, Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> it was hilarious. I was like, okay, Hannah did that on purpose, but it was too funny. He's like, oh Lord. And so um they learned that the car is at the Malone's bar. He's like, oh my God, they must have my son. I gotta get out of here. Go, you know, David, no, I'll go check it out. I'll go check it out. And so um, David goes there to the, to the, uh, to find out. Oh no, Jim calls, Jim calls Mama Rose's phone to find out what's going on. If, if, if he, she has Wyatt and the line is disconnected. And he says she had that number for 30 years. He's shocked that it's disconnected. So he goes, David goes to the bar, and of course, who we run into, little Sandy, trying to be tough again, his little wimp ass. You know, he's such a wimp, and he's trying to be tough and tell him to get out of here, we closed, and he, um, David's trying to say, look, what that car is out there, has Wyatt been here? He said, do you hear what I'm saying? He wouldn't answer him nothing about Wyatt. He wouldn't even, uh, he, he didn't even want to acknowledge him. Let's put it that way. Sandy was being... Typical racist Sandy. I can't stand this part of it when he, when he acts like that, you know, because he trying to be tough. And like Uncle Vinny said, you're only tough with that, that, that black girl when you had that black girl, you know who what. He said, family is everything. And she done had an abortion and got rid of your kid. And I was like, wow. He was like, I know she was doing that. But see, she was smart. She knew to get rid of her damn, that damn kid, who he his family is and how he was always threatening her and stuff. Who wants to bring a child in when the father's acting like that? She would have never had any peace in her life. Any peace, I don't think. So she did the right thing I, in, in my book. I don't know. Y'all could put it down in the comment section, but that's just how I feel, you know? And so David wouldn't, I mean, Sandy wouldn't speak to David. He had the bouncers or whoever the, the security get him out. And he was like, that's okay. And he left. He They wouldn't tell him anything. And so that's when Sandy, he was talking to Sandy, and Sandy came, and I mean, gosh, Sandy. <sighs> Uncle Vinny came up after David left and was talking to Sandy, and he was telling him, you know, he's like, Uncle Vinny, I'm sorry. I know you're disappointed. You know, I, I, I'll make it. I'll do right. I'll do better, blah, 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 blah. 
and say, and Uncle Vinny's like, you know, you think I'm gonna, you gotta, you gotta, we gotta keep the family tight. He's like, we gotta keep this family tight, don't you know? He said, you think I'm gonna give, a dare not let the family be taken over by the blacks and the Jews? I said, oh, oh, I knew it was Uncle Vinny who was like that. You know, Mama Rose did a look, but we they haven't really shown Mama Rose not liking blacks, even though we know they didn't allow them in their property or something. It was something like that, but. That was, wow, the blacks and the Jews. I said, oh, okay. And he told him, he said, you're all that's left. He said, Mitch won't come into the family. You don't have kids. He's like, that. Like guess the family is like dwindling and they need to, you know, build it back up. He said, family is everything. I said, wow. Then they show Justin and his brother. Justin and his brother. They're having a talk. His brother is feeling guilty, thinking it's his fault that Justin is a queer, as he called him. He said, I'm not queer. He said, okay, gay. He said, I'm not gay. And Justin's like, I don't know how I got like this. I don't know how I got like this. He said, I know how you got like that. I told you, stop playing with your damn cousins with the pom-poms and stuff. All that little girly stuff he was playing with. And he blamed himself, he said, because when, when their father died, he took over. He, he was the man of the house. And he kept saying, he told them to let me teach you how to be a man. But his mother didn't let him or something like that. I was like, I don't know. But, um, and then Justin said, I did what you made me do and stuff like that. He said, oh, come on. You enjoyed it. You enjoyed it. He said, I was six years old. He was six years old. And his brother made him have sex with a 15-year-old. A 15-year-old. He said, it was not. He said, you enjoyed it. He said, I did not. And the brother saying, that's how old he was when he first had sex. Come on, you're six years old. What you know about having sex? It ain't make no sense. I didn't even know why they put that that line in it. Tyler, Tyler, why even bother to put that line in there? Because it didn't even make any sense, six-year-olds having sex with 15-year-olds. I was like, come on now, you know. So he told him, he a little pussy, he told him, you know. You, you, you just, you need to get out of it. He's like, he want to beat it out of him, but he sees that's not going to work. And he said, come on. He said, you have to get out. Um, he said, this is killing me. It's killing your wife. It's killing ma. He's like, come on, dude. And he's like, I don't want Adonax to be like this. So it was all that sob story. Anyhow, then there's Hannah and uh, Catherine's attorney, Marty. He comes and, you know, he lets her know that he wants, to, the accountants want to meet with her. He asks her how her reading is going. She's saying it's a lot of information. He got her reading up, I guess, information on what Catherine does and what her responsibilities will be, you know, as the executor. So she says it's a lot of reading. And she said, okay, about meeting with the accountant. So Marty leaves. And then they show that black security guard that, you know, went to college with Amanda and he brings Catherine a sandwich to eat, you know, and he was saying how he could get in trouble because she wants him to do her favor. And he's like, I just started this job. I need this job. She was like, well, how much do you get paid? He's like $50,000. She's like, how are you supposed to live off of that? He, he said, I live a comfortable life, uh, you know, a, a good life. And she was like, I can give you money. She keeps saying, I can give you money. I just need to, you know, know what's happening. And so she told him, he told her what he knew about Wyatt. He's doing fine, blah, blah, blah. The bad news is he escaped. She's like, what? She said, and the other bad news is your house was broken in. She said, don't worry, that was Wyatt. She, a mother knows their child. A mother knows their child, believe me. And she knows Wyatt. So she didn't even blink on that. But she needed to make a phone call and could not make the phone call. And, you know, because he, he left, you know, what was it? Kendrick is his name, the black security guy, a police officer. I'm sorry, not security, police officer. And he's like, my boss is coming. My boss is coming. And she was like, she was begging him, please. And he was like, he'll come back after his shift. And he said, I got to go. And he leaves and here comes Chief Shepard. He comes over there and says, hello, and introduces himself. And he says who he is. And she's like, oh, finally, somebody in charge. And she said, I'd like to complain, make some complaints about the conditions in this jail. <laughs> Catherine is so funny. <laughs> she's like, shoot, they gave Mama Rose a seat. Why not hook her up with a, a blanket or something? So she's like, I've been sleeping on that wooden bench. And he's like, you know, it's it's." he said, uh, Miss, it's not a hotel, Mrs. Cryer. It's not a hotel. 
And she's like, yeah, but you know, come on, you know, <laughs> I guess she wants a mattress. Give her a mattress, you know, anyways, um, what else? So they're going back and forth and she's like, you, I would like for you to make me comfortable. She's like, she's complaining like, you know, like the queen she feels she is. And he's like, maybe I'll make you comfortable when you look into that million dollars. And she was like, well, what did you say? He said, yeah, I heard that you were supposed to get a million dollars for your son or something like that. And she was like, what? That's when she realized, what? He know Mama Rose payroll. You on Mama Rose's payroll? And he was like, I don't know what you're talking about. She said, you tell that bitch I ain't giving her a dime, not a penny. I ain't giving her nothing. And she told him, you don't scare me. He was like, but I don't have anything to do with it. She said, oh, yes, you do. You're on her payroll, you know. And let you let him know. And she, he said, nah. she said, I'm going to get even. She threatened that she was going to get it even. And as he walks out, he calls somebody and says, she said, no. So I don't know if it was Mama Rose or maybe Uncle Vinny or somebody. But he called somebody and told him she said no. And it ended with Benny. You know, with Benny and going to see that realtor. And the realtor was fussing with somebody on the phone. And she looked like she was crying. And, you know, and he said, you look like you've been crying. She said, no, it's just allergies. It's allergies. He, she, so she gave him a couple of places to look at while she went out. And then the phone rings and it's Veronica. Veronica is telling him, I got that information that you needed about Derek. And he's like, no, nah, I got it already. She said, okay, if you don't want it then. Okay. He was like, no, nah, wait, give it to me. Give it to me. Oh, excuse me. My nose is just, oh. And she said, um, she's telling him, uh, you wanted to know about, um, the man who raped your mother. He's like, how you know that? She said, I'm Veronica, darling. I know these things. I said, oh, you better go ahead, Veronica. <laughs> but see, you won't involve her. She gonna dig and stuff. You know, you putting her in the middle of this stuff. And, and he's like, give me his address. Give me his address. I'm gonna kill him. I'm gonna kill him. Why Benny think he's so tough? Why he think he can beat anybody? He can't beat nobody. He can't take care of himself. He think he's so tough, but we're going to see what happens because they show next week that he's at Derek's house. What else do they show for next week? Um, Veronica trying to take uh, Laurel's husband upstairs with her somewhere. It, it's, it's just, she, she just a hoe. She a hoe. Madison a hoe. You, we going to find out Madison a real hoe sleeping with everybody. I can't wait till that part happens when they meet at lunch together to see how he gets out of this mess. But anyway, guys, it's been real. It's your girl, Barbie J. And I'm signing out because it's late and I want to go to bed, okay? Put down in the comment section whatever you want to know about the show. If you want to have some conversation going back and forth, give me my thumbs up or whatever. Subscribe, share, comment, all right? I see you guys next week. Peace.